Nintendo is a company that's known for huge hits since its first entrance in the video game industry with the NES, Nintendo Entertainment System. Also some big failures like the Nintendo GameCube and the Nintendo Wii U. We already know that the Nintendo Switch is not only a big hit, but one of the best selling consoles ever. Only behind the PlayStation 2, Nintendo DS, Nintendo Game Boy and Game Boy Color, and the PlayStation 4. I am Lucas Highland, and in this video I will let you know if the Nintendo Switch is still worth it in 2022. To give a little context, we need to understand how a console like the Nintendo Switch can sell so much when the competition has basically everything that most of the audience are looking for. Graphics and pure technological power like the PlayStation 5, the Xbox Series X, and the PC. While the Nintendo Switch graphics looks well... like this. <laughs> well, this conversation is a very complex topic that basically started this YouTube channel. The graphics are actually not everything that matters in a video game. Hopefully we are getting so far with realism in video game graphics that I feel we are not very far away from the time where graphics won't matter anymore because all video games will be photorealistic. But in the old days, the jump in graphics from one generation to another used to be enormous. But Nintendo was the first in the graphics race for a long time. Just so you know, when the NES was released, this was how their competitors looked like. When the Super NES was released, this was how their competitors looked like. But when the Nintendo 64 was released, this was how their competitors looked like. And finally, the same comparison but for the GameCube. As you can see from 1983 when the NES was released to 2001 when the GameCube was released, the difference in graphics between Nintendo and its competitors were getting smaller and smaller until 2001 when it was actually not the best in graphics anymore. Not only that, but at each generation they were selling less and less. This was when they realized that they would lose if they tried to face PlayStation and Xbox in the race for the best graphics. So they took a phenomenal turning point that they followed till these days. Since the Nintendo Wii, their main goal was to release innovative consoles that have something that the others didn't. But you cannot say the same thing about the PlayStation and the Xbox because they nowadays are very similar in concept. They are machines made for performance and the best graphics. Boring once you will hear the same thing since the PlayStation 2 generation. And the Nintendo Switch was the perfect reply for this. While the entire video game industry were shifting towards the online playing, and most of the games that had classic split-screen modes stopped including those and were only focusing on graphics and competitive online play, Nintendo was just there, sitting and waiting for everybody to leave. And without having to do anything, they were left with a huge market that would not only satisfy the casual players, but also the hardcore Pokedex feelers. No one else was working on this anymore, and they had the split screen and local multiplayer all for themselves. Nintendo was very quick to realize this and invented a peripheral that would revolutionize the way we play and make the best experience for a local multiplayer ever, the Joy-Cons. With the Joy-Cons, you could get one controller and play with your friends without having to invest $70 in a new controller. It was more affordable than ever to play with your friends. And if you wanted to invest extra $70, you would be able to play with 4 players now. Just for comparison, if you wanted to play with 4 controllers in a PS5, you would need to purchase 3 extra $70 controllers that would end up costing you $210, almost the price of a full Nintendo Switch. In my perspective, the real deal with the Nintendo Switch is the local multiplayer. This is why I think that it makes no sense to compare it with the Steam Deck, for example. These and, well, their sales. <laughs> Not only this, but as they needed to make a detachable controller to do so, they also made a hybrid console that we could play at home by using the dock or also on the go. And with the Pro Controller, they made a checkmate. Now they had a console to replace the dying portable games that was destroyed by the mobile gaming in smartphones, but also they had the best console for a local multiplayer. And with lots of party games, it's the only console that I think that you and your friends will be willing to turn on on a Friday night party. Not satisfied with that, they have lots of more serious and competitive titles to play with your pro controller. They made the most versatile console ever. And do you know what else is very versatile? 
this channel. I bring you new videos about the whole video game industry because as a true gamer, I don't pick sides. I basically play whatever platform I can put my hands on. I even play in my Mac. Am I crazy? Probably, but if it doesn't deserve your subscription, I don't know what does. Now you can click on this beautiful subscribe button right below this video. Thank you and now let's go back to the video. The Nintendo Switch has great local multiplayer exclusive titles like Super Smash Bros, Mario Kart, Mario Party and 1-2 Switch. Also some casual exclusives like Kirby and the Forgotten Lands, Super Mario Odyssey and Animal Crossing. Competitive exclusives like the whole Pokemon franchise and some great exclusive story games like The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and 3 and yet many more to come. And they are all real exclusives, not just one-year exclusives like PlayStation is doing right now. And if you think it doesn't matter, just look at the list of best-selling games for the Nintendo Switch. The 17 best-selling games in the Nintendo Switch are published by Nintendo. Also, they are all exclusives for the Nintendo consoles. And if you still think that Nintendo games are not good, look at the list of the best-selling games ever in the world in all platforms. 25 of the top 50 are from Nintendo. That's impressive. This is a console that may not have all the exclusives out there, but it has lots of awesome games that are not elsewhere. Currently, there are three different models of Nintendo Switch. The standard one that we'll call just Switch, the OLED that I don't have, and the Nintendo Switch Lite. The OLED is a Nintendo Switch with a better and bigger screen that also due to OLED consumes a little less battery. Most people won't even notice, but it's worth mentioning. This little stand here on the OLED version is a little better too. The speakers are slightly better and it has more internal storage. The Nintendo Switch Lite is a smaller version that as you can see, you cannot detach the Joy-Cons and also you cannot dock this console to play in your television, making it simply a handheld version of the Nintendo Switch. This probably is an oversimplification, but if you are trying to decide which model Model of the Nintendo Switch you should get, this is what I think. If you are a home first player but sometimes will want to play in handheld mode but will play mostly on the TV, save the extra money and get the standard one. If you are always traveling around and you are gonna play it mainly in handheld mode but also want to dock it from time to time, then the extra 50 bucks on the Nintendo Switch OLED sounds like a good deal. And if you never play on a TV and don't mind to always using the Nintendo Switch in handheld mode, then a Switch Lite is the perfect fit for you. Also, if someone else in your house already has a Nintendo Switch standard or OLED, don't get another one, just get a, a Lite and whenever you want to play in the TV, just use the other one you have, which is the case. This is my Switch and this is my wife's Switch, otherwise I wouldn't pick this color for me. In my opinion, not only the Nintendo Switch is worth it in 2022 as it is the best console available right now, because it puts fun in first place, not graphics. Nintendo is the only big company that's still solving problems with creativity instead of more horsepower and technology. And yes, I have a PS5 as well as a gaming PC that you can see over there. And I still feeling that nothing beats the fun of playing with your friends with them by your side instead of having to play with them through a call. But the main question is this, should you get a Nintendo Switch? And although the Nintendo Switch is my favorite console, I cannot recommend it for everybody. It will depend on what are you looking for in a console. If you are looking for the most exclusive experience with some excellent exclusive titles, but you don't mind most of these titles are very family friendly and sometimes a little too childish like most of the recent Pokemon games, then the Nintendo Switch is definitely for you. And also, if you want to play mostly with your friends, maybe with your family at home, probably no other console will beat this one. But if you are more of a lone wolf who likes to play by yourself and really enjoy to playing hardcore competitive and online games, if you are one of those who only plays for graphics, or if you, what you really want is to play with the most advanced technology like VR for example, then I cannot say the Nintendo Switch is the console for you. And be aware, although the Nintendo Switch is the most affordable console nowadays with a price as low as $270 for the standard model, it's definitely not the cheapest one to play. First of all, their games are quite expensive and they very rarely reduce their prices or put any game on sales. And they also don't have any 
any service like the PlayStation Plus or the Xbox Game Pass. So don't let the price be a determined factor when deciding between a Nintendo Switch and another console. Because the chances are that in the long term you will put more money in a Nintendo Switch than a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox for the same amount of games. So if you are on a budget, don't forget to count with these factors too. I hope this video helped you to understand what the Nintendo Switch represents in the video game industry in 2022. And also if you should get one even though it's a 5 year old console already. I am Lucas Highland, thank you so much for watching, don't forget to subscribe and to like this video. I bring new videos like this about the video game industry every single week. And if you have nothing better to do, watch this other video that YouTube is suggesting you. And if you have something better to do, do it and then come back and watch this other video that YouTube is suggesting you. Thank you again and see you in the next video.